You made it. Welcome. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Flannel and Pod. I am Christopher. I am from Flannel and Pearls. You may know me from Instagram. I have to assume that everybody who is currently watching this episode likely knows me from Instagram. I feel like I have absolutely no audience here. This is my very first episode. This is my first YouTube. I'm a YouTuber now. <laughs> I feel really excited. This is I'm doing this because of y'all. Y'all peer pressured me into doing this. And don't think that I have forgotten about that. Don't think that I didn't, that it missed me, that I didn't realize that that is what happened. This is an ask and you shall receive type of situation because y'all kept asking and I said, eventually, well, here we are. We have eventually reached eventually. So I couldn't be happier to be here. I'm very excited. Let's lay some groundwork. Let's 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 just get some some stuff out of the way here. First and foremost, I am in a room that is currently three sides of it are just glass. There are curtains galore up. However, you might hear some traffic. You might hear some airplanes because O'Hare not too terribly far from here. You may even hear so you're probably going to hear some dogs. You're probably gonna hear some dogs because my neighbor's backyard is right there and they have the loudest dog I have ever seen in my entire life. And I grew up with dogs. I grew up in the middle of the Ozark Mountains. I grew up in a rural environment. I grew up around dogs. And I can say we always had anywhere between three to five dogs and they made a quarter of the racket that this one singular pup makes. I like dogs, but I don't like this one. Or maybe I just don't like the neighbor. You know what? Let's blame, let's blame the owner. Let's not blame the dog. I'm just absolutely, I am delighted to be here. This is an entirely new adventure for me. I've never done anything like this before. And I, you know, I want to, you know, let's get it out of the way. When did we start calling this a podcast? I'm very confused. I feel very old. I feel very out of the loop because to me, podcast is audio. I'm a big podcast listener. I probably listen to anywhere between 12 to 14 hours of podcasts a week. A week. I'm a big podcast fan. But to me, I just always thought that a podcast was something that you heard, which I mean, not that you can't hear this, but it was something that had no visual component to it. To me, I thought that a vlog was what this was. And I brought this up with someone the other day. I said, well, how is this not a vlog? And they said, well, a vlog is like a video vlog. Is that not what this is? Is that not what most podcasts are? Unless it's a sort of like dialogue interview style podcast. I don't know. I comment below. Tell me the difference between a vlog and a podcast because I, I feel very out of the loop, very out of the loop. But here it is, Flannel and Pod. If you don't know who I am, my name is Christopher. I run the Flannel and Pearls Instagram account. I am a crafter. I knit, I sew, sometimes I crochet if I can be talked into it. I just started spinning wool. I just love craft. I am a huge fan of all things craft. I, my journey is not a terribly long one. This is something that I don't talk about all the time, but I just started knitting in January of 2022. January 2022, we're in the second year of the pandemic, the second year. And I'm feeling a little antsy. I'm feeling a little bored. I'm feeling a little listless. And so I was like, what is this whole knitting thing about? Like, what on earth is it? I just see people doing it. I grew up crocheting to a degree. My grandmother was a very big crafter. She sewed. I'm so lucky to have her vintage metal Singer sewing machine in my craft room, which is back there. Maybe one day we'll go in there. Maybe when I actually get it looking nice. But it's in there. She sewed beautifully. She was a wonderful painter and she crocheted so well. I have these vivid memories when I was mm, single digit aged because she died when I was quite young. But I have these vivid memories of visiting our family farm in Southern Illinois, which sadly the building itself has been stripped to its bones. It's since left the family and it's been stripped to its bones and sort of just rebuilt. But the building itself was originally built in the late 1800s and uh, my family renovated it in the early 1940s. That was my grandparents. And my grandpa and my grandmother, they lived there for the entirety of their lives uh, for, the, for the most part. And I have these really vivid memories of going to this farm that was in the middle of nowhere, this country blue house with black shutters, 
surrounded by just a, a sea of corn or soybeans, depending on what year the crop was growing, but a sea of farmland, just a blue speck in the middle of green with not a single neighbor for miles around. And we would spend our summers there. And I can just, I, I remember being so excited to run up the walk to the their back door, which was through the mud room, which is where everybody came in. No one ever used the front door. I feel like that's a very generational thing where like you'd always go in through the back door, through the mud room. And like maybe sometimes company came through the front door, maybe. But uh, there was this walkway, this wooden walkway that they had built that was banked on either side by long flower uh, plots. Just They're not flower boxes. They were just just strips for flowers. And they were bookended at the front and the back by, do you know those giant, they look like almost like half barrels, like wooden barrels that have been split in half. And they have uh, like iron rings on them and people turn them into planters. I don't know any other better way to describe them than that. They look like wooden barrels that have just been right in half. Maybe that's what they are. I never really considered it until now. Maybe that's it. But they had those at the very end, those big buckets, those were reserved for strictly chrysanthemums and marigolds, my grandmother's two favorite flowers. Marigolds for the spring and the summer, chrysanthemums for the fall, always. The strips of flowers filled with peppermint and spearmint. Now I couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you if that was because she didn't know any better and she planted them. And like I have learned, they are an invasive species. <laughs> And so the whole thing just became that. I don't know. But the, the intoxicating smell of mint, that unfortunate sour smell of marigolds, and just the beautiful, almost like honeyed aroma of chrysanthemums is such a vivid memory for me. And we spent so, so much of our time on this farm. And it was there. And there very retro, extremely 70s, like we're talking like wood paneling. That one couch that it seems to appear in every single faded Fujifilm snap of like, it's it's like a impossibly itchy polyester tweed fabric that is almost always beige, avocado green, orange, and brown. Which I am suddenly looking around my office and realizing that couch has heavily influenced my aesthetics. You cannot see it, but the rug that I am currently sitting on top of at the moment is avocado green, beige, brown, and orange. Well, you know, consistency. Familial consistency, what can we say? Anyway, it was there on that couch in that family room. The family room, not the living room. The living room was another room that for some reason we only used during Christmas. No one was allowed in there, but the family room. It was there watching Daddy Long Legs and The Sound of Music and old VHS recordings of The Carol Burnett Show. She taught me how to crochet. She was incredibly insistent that I didn't get to move on to anything like a uh, granny square or learning how to double chain or anything like that until I could get a single chain to be perfectly even from stitch to stitch. She was very traditional. <laughs> we never got past that because I was a kid. And of course I was bored to tears just making one infinitely long rope of irregular stitches. So unfortunately we never got beyond that. And now several, several many years later, which I'm not going to tell you how many, because you don't need to know how old I am. I don't need to disclose that. But several many years later, here I am sort of rediscovering what fiber craft is to me. It's been a magical experience, to be perfectly frank. Like it's been so much fun. And craft is something that is absolutely in my blood. I have dabbled in so many different forms of craft throughout my life. This is the first time I've really jumped headlong into fiber. And I feel so lucky to have found this amazing global community of people who share this extraordinary passion, who have so much knowledge. They have so much to share with me. I, I'm so lucky. I feel like a sponge. I'm just like, just constantly soaking up everything that all of you have to share with me. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm so excited that this gets to be like the next step, right? This is like the, the next piece of that puzzle. So here's what I'd love to do. 
Here's what I'd love to do. I'd love to go through my whips, which like, I don't have that many at the moment. I don't have a lot going on because for anyone who has followed me on Instagram, you know, it's been a hard summer. It's been a cruel summer. What was that, Kaja Gugu? If I don't knock over that water glass throughout the process of this video, that's gonna be a miracle. All tea. All right, so let's see what's in my bag. Let's see what I'm working on first and foremost. First up on the deck, I have to talk about this for just a second. I know you guys are probably sick of hearing about it, especially those of you who follow me on Instagram, but you know what, I have to bring it up and I need to show it off before I rip it completely back. I wanna talk about my Naughty Pine Fiber striped sweater. I love Naughty Pine Fiber so much. I love, I love Kayla's work. I really do. For those of you who are not familiar, Naughty Pine Fiber is based out of Wyoming here in the United States. It is some of the most, if you love colorways that are beautifully saturated and clearly built and based around a conceit of almost like a fantastic idea of what nature is. It's, it's almost like the memory of nature, not even the experience of witnessing it firsthand, but it is a nostalgic rose-tinted view of the majesty of what this earth provides us. Like, if you love colorways that are based on that conceit, Naughty Pine Fiber, check them out. Linked in the, linked below. Yeah, on Instagram, check them out. They're beautiful. And you know what? I'm in the wrong line of business because Kayla's got it figured out. She does not update very often. Her shop is oftentimes just kind of in just sort of like a, a state of existence with like maybe one or two skeins in it. And then she does an update and it sells out instantly. Instantly. Like, I mean, we're just like, gone. I'm in the wrong line of business because she's got it figured out for real. And so the last time she did a big shop update with lots of different colors, nine to be exact. I know it was nine. Why? Because I bought a skein of every single color every single one of them. And I said, I'm gonna make a striped sweater. I'm very excited about it. And I designed this on the uh, go. I did not use a pattern. I just kind of used my intuition and a bit of swatching, a bit of math. And you know what, honestly, for the most part, it worked out. Like for the most part, it worked out. The reason that I have to rip it back is because of the color. The intention that I had with this particular color is that I wanted it to lay flat against the collarbone as a folded, collar. Like that's what I wanted. I wanted it to be folded and lay flat against the collar. And I put too few stitches on it. Like that's really what it came down to is it just, it has too few stitches. And so now it's sort of like a, a mock neck, uh, a mock turtleneck instead of being that like nice, flat, beautiful little, little collar. So I thought it would work. I really did. Like I kept going being like, ooh, that neck seems a little high. Oh, that neck seems a little tight. You know what, it's gonna work out, it'll block out. It did not block out. And now I'm having to, to rip everything back. And what I am left with is just a whole pile of just a, what I refer to as ramen woodles, cause they're wool. They've also been compared to Justin Timberlake's hair circa 1999. Shh, we don't talk about Justin, no, no, no. That's whip one. This is in timeout. I have to rip everything out. I have to re I have to I have to soak all of the the woodles to get them straight again, which like thank you for everybody who weighed in on that. I think that I feel most comfortable with the reality of the matter is is that I have no timeline on this particular project. And so I think that I am just going to go ahead and I'm going to soak them all. I'm going to soak them all. I'm going to put it through its paces and it's going to be it's going to be fine. Ugh. So that's number one. Whip number two is one that I'm very excited about. I am currently working on the mini plea sock. The mini plea sock is by Katharina Duden from Ducathy. If you are not familiar, again, linked below. Some of the, if you love a little color work sock, which, hold the block, I love color work socks. I just, I find color work socks to be so incredibly charming. I, but I was wildly intimidated by them. I know how to do color work. I've done a color work yoke sweater. I've done one, but that's very different. That feels like a completely different challenge. I mean, it's on a US eight. It's on a much wider gauge. It's with worsted, not fingering. Like it's, it seemed like a much bigger task and a much bigger challenge to be able to do it in a much tighter circle with smaller needles, with smaller yarn. 
But I have to tell you, I am enjoying this so much. Let's see if we can just get like a nice little close up on this. Look at that. Isn't that charming? I love it. Also, because I am such a newbie, because I'm such a newbie to this, this tight circle color work, I also just want to show off my floats because I have worked so hard. <laughs> I've worked so hard on them and I just want to float. I just want to show off my floats because they're just so, they're just so nice. I'm very proud of them. I've ripped back so many rows so that I could correct them so that they would all be perfectly even. And I just, I'm delighted by that. This pattern is such a great one for anyone who is looking to get into Colorwork socks because this is my first pair. This is my first pair of Colorwork socks. That is a lie. The lie detective determined that was a lie. Oh! I apologize. I have made the infamous sprocket sock. I have made the sprocket sock, but I see that as a little bit different. Personally, I see stranded color work as different than mosaic because with mosaic, you're only ever working with that one strand at a time. So it's for all intents and purposes like knitting anything else. Three colors at one time, however, picking with the left hand and throwing with the right, carrying three different floats, like mm. As much as I love the sprocket sock, which like, if you don't know it, Pippin Pin, check it out. Absolutely amazing. Uh, just Sprocket Sock on Ravelry. You know what? I'm going to put a link. I always forget that I can do that. I don't have to just like say it out loud. But um, there's a link. If you're new to color work and you want to kind of like take the dive into doing some color work socks, that's a really good one. I made two sets of those. Still obsessed. I'd make another pair now. If you've got one of those little mini sets hanging around with like five to six different minis in it, and you want to do some color work, that's, that is, it is made for that. So check that out. But this pattern, it's such a joy. It's such a, it's such a joy because it's such a simple pattern to remember. And it's a pattern that tells on itself. I love patterns that tell on themselves in the sense that like, you can tell what the next row is going to be based on the previous one. Once the pattern sort of gets into your muscles, once it gets into your brain and you can sort of estimate, you can kind of remember, even if you forget, even if you sort of forget, you could take a look at it and be like, ah, yes, yes, that's the next row. Perfect. Got it. I love patterns like that because I can't, I, I am, I am too disjointed. I am too easily distracted to be looking down and then looking up and then looking down and then looking up. Like I can't, I can't do that. So this is a really great pattern. If you're looking to, to jump into stranded color work, um, I would love for you to join me. Come along. I'm just about ready to get the heel started on this one. And that's that's going to be a lot of fun. The yarn, the yarn. I just want to take a, a second just to talk about this yarn because this is really unique for me. A friend of mine over at Finished Knits, again, linked below. Finished Knits is a US-based company that, that provides specialty finish with two ends, like the country. Finish wool and fibers. And what's really unique about this is that, I don't know if you're like me, I love a thick, heavy sock. I'm not gonna touch that. But I love a good boot sock, love a good boot sock. But the problem is, is that you need that little bit of nylon, right? You can't just make any sock out of, or you can't just make a sock out of any yarn. Like if it's 100% wool, particularly merino, that thing is gonna wear out, particularly if you're wearing it in a boot. You need that little bit of nylon and it's not just for the sake of stretch, it's also for the sake of durability. It helps kind of elongate its life. And I'm all about darning, I'm all about doing the mend. Like I, I love making sure that we use things for as long as physically possible. But at the same time, I don't want to darn everything almost immediately. And especially with that, personally, that beautiful silken merino wool, I don't want to put it inside of a boot. I don't want to wear it day after day after day. I mean, not that I wear the same socks every day. <laughs> but I don't want to wear them all the time in the winter because I am a part of the always cold gang. I The toes are the first thing to go. And so I wanted some thick, fuzzy, non-silken, non-merino wool that I could use to make socks. 
This is Lankava. It's from the Lankava Yarn House. They are based out of Finland. And what's incredible, they have over 20 tonals, so they don't do any variegations or anything of that nature. They do some self uh, some self striping, but most of its tonal comes in over 20 different colors, and each of the colors comes in three weights. So this is the Sulo, which is fingering, but they also have a DK and they have a worsted. So you can get those good thick, heavy boot socks in whatever color you want. You want to do a contrast, do a contrast. And the best part is, I think it's like $8 a skein. You can make an entire pair of socks. You can make a good pair of high cuff boot socks for like eight bucks. Wonderful price. Anyone who is price conscious, anyone who's working on a budget, I'm obsessed. Finishedknits.com, huge, 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 huge fan. So please do give them a check. If you'd like, I'd love it if you did because I need other people to know about this. I need there to be more retailers of this particular yarn in the United States because it's, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if we, let's see if we can get up close. Let's show off the white here. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it, but there's just the gentlest halo. It's not silken. It's not quite as fuzzy as, say, like an Icelandic knit. It doesn't have that like stickiness to it. It's very soft. It's incredibly soft. It's very squeezable. And it makes just for the softest, lightly fuzzy socks. I'm done. I'm done gushing. I'm done gushing. All I'm saying is that I like it. I'm a fan. Didn't know about it until last month. May have bought 12 different colors. May have. I won't. I won't say. So that's whip number two. Let's talk about number three. Now, this one I just started on. I have absolutely no shame in admitting that because it is going to be quite the undertaking. I am currently working on the Awen sweater, which is from Hudson and West. It's designed originally by Megan, Megan Babin. And please forgive me, I'm gonna be pronouncing a lot of names today that I have only ever seen written down. I have never heard anyone actually say them. So Megan, sweetheart, please forgive me. If it's Babin, Babin, I'm not sure, Babine? I don't know. What I do know is you should be following her on Instagram. I also think you should be following Hudson and West because they make some of the most beautiful, multi-gendered, agendered, multi-body size. Like we're talking about size inclusive, gender inclusive. I the, the work that they put in is just absolutely wonderful when it comes to including everyone that they possibly can in their designs. And they're also beautiful. Like, win-win oh, right there, right? So I just started on this. I got my swatches done and this was a doozy of a swatch pattern because it called for two and I am here to say I did both of them. It called for a texture knit. This is a basket weave. And then it also called for a swatch of the cable itself, which you can get a little bit of the, a little bit of a preview there on what that cable is gonna look like. I told myself when I first started knitting that to me the peak the top, the tippity top of that is a cable knit sweater complete. And I'm talking complete. I don't want like a stockinette sleeve or a moss sleeve. No, 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 no. I want full. I want cables up and down, I want cables up and down. You can have a little bit of something right here to just kind of like bank it a little bit. But I just, I want to be completely covered in cables because to me that is just, I have nothing against color work. I have nothing against lace. I have nothing against any of that stuff. Just to me, cables is just like, that is the, the tippity top of the magic of knitting to me. It just feels like, I feel like a magician when I am making some beautiful cables. And this particular pattern, it produces some gorgeous designs. I'm very excited. The yarn that I have for this, I also wanna talk about because it's also very unique to me and it's also brand new. This is the Eco Shetland Worsted from Estelle Yarns. I hope I'm not too close to that microphone. The color is pine. I have one that's unwrapped. I have one that's unwrapped here so you can look at that. Look at that color. Look at that color. Isn't that beautiful? I wanted, it, it's called pine, but personally it, it's giving me emerald. It feels like sometimes it's, it's, it's giving Hobbit. It's giving Baba Yaga Bogwitch realness. It feels like it is some mossy floor of a forgotten forest that sits on a lake and it smells like peat moss and it smells like damp earth. It, it just, it, 
I really like this. I love this color. I also want to make a waistcoat out of it with brass buttons. I've already got the pattern picked out and inevitably I'm going to make that too. Very, very excited. And when I saw this color, I just instantly knew. I don't know if you're like me. I buy patterns and I collect patterns, whether they're free, whether I have to pay for them. I just collect patterns. I just have a library of like dozens upon dozens of patterns and they're just kind of locked away in my brain. And so when I see a yarn, it's like a connection is made between the, the memory of that pattern in my brain and what I am looking at in person. Because I don't buy yarn really without much intention attached to it. The one exception I would make to that probably is going to be um, socks, like in terms of like sock sets. I'll buy a sock set because the sock set's going to become a sock. <laughs> so I'll do that. But when it comes to like sweater quantities or something of that nature. I know some people just gobble up sweater quantities and I think that that is amazing. It's amazing, thank you. But me personally, I have limited space. So I gotta make sure that I keep that to a bit of a minimum. But when I saw this, when I saw this particular yarn and I got this yarn from Your Next Knit, which is a Canadian-based online website um, that, pro that provides some really gorgeous, unique stuff. Estelle Yarns, also based in Canada. I want to say that Your Next Knit is based out of British Columbia and Estelle Yarns is based out of Ontario. Um, it's so unique. I've, I've never seen this in a store. Uh, forgive me if anyone is listening and they retail it. I have not seen it personally. And what I find really unique about it, I'm going to bring it back out. It has the stickiness of a an Icelandic yarn, sort of like a Letlopi, but it isn't as irregularly spun. You can sort of see in this hank that it is perfectly regular. It is super consistent in its spin, but it has that stickiness but it's not quite as rough. I don't know about you, but the first time that I worked with uh, Let Lopi, which I've made two sweaters with it now, it was kind of rough. I felt like I was kind of getting a bit of a friction burn on my fingers. No lie. Like, this is not doing that. It is certainly not a silken merino. It absolutely is not. It is what it is, which is a 100% Shetland. And it feels like that. But at the same time, there is a softness to it that I personally feel the Let Lopi is lacking a little bit. I have a feeling that this would work beautifully for color work. I think that it would make an absolutely stunning yoke. They, it comes in lots of different colors. I have every intention of making a color work sweater out of this particular brand. And I am definitely gonna get it from Your Next Knit because they have been absolutely wonderful to me and they've been wonderful to work with and they ship worldwide. So for those of you who are not in the United States or in Canada, they'll get it to you. So I've not done a whole lot on this yet. I was given the advice. My God, I am so embarrassed with all of this tangled up yarn. I will admit I don't actually keep all of my whips in this little basket. That's not where I keep them. I put them in there for the sake of keeping them together so that I could show them to you. And in the process of doing that, I have inadvertently actually made a huge mess for myself. And that's, oh, I'm not usually this disorganized. I'm not usually this big of a mess. But you know what? We're doing this live. We'll do it live. And we're being vulnerable and we're being candid with one another. Or at least I am. Or maybe I'm lying to myself. Who knows? But. I've not done a whole lot on this yet. Um, this is the sleeves, these are the cuffs. And what's really exciting about this and really unique for me is that I have never done a seamed sweater before. I've made three sweaters, mm, three and a half. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've made three and a half sweaters, but they've all been top down seamless. Either it's the sort of like color work, sort of, uh, sort of just traditional sort of seamless yoke, or it's been a raglan. Those are the only two that I've done. I've never done a, a seamed sweater before, let alone knit the sleeves first and done them flat. So this is a very, this is a new experience where it is new all around. It's just new, new, new. We're doing a full cable knit sweater for the first time, seamed for the first time, doing the sleeves first for the first, or for the first time. Like this is, this is exciting. That is whip number three. The last one, the last one is actually probably the most unique. Let me put this away and I'm gonna give you what is my current obsession. Okay, so again, anyone who follows me on Instagram knows that I am on a new journey. I'm on a new journey right now. I am becoming a spinster. 
I don't know how old you have to be to apply for that job, but I am hoping that they will take uh, young men because I, I would very much like to apply for that position because I have started spinning my own wool and it's really, really exciting. It was something that I've seen a lot of on Instagram. I see people with their little mechanical, their their uh, electric spinners, the, the treadle. I, I see drop spindles. I see supported spindles. And I was just like, this is... And this is magic. Like this is this is magic is what this is. And it just it blew my mind. I had to I had to do it for myself. And before we even get started, I just want to say for the record, if you're watching and you were one of the people who left a comment on my spinning posts, leaving me stories about your own horrors of working with a drop spindle or a supported spindle and how the frustration, the emotional anguish Sometimes the physical pain that it gave you. My God, you almost, you almost scared me out of this. You really did. You almost kept me away from it. No joke. <laughs> I walked into this absolutely terrified. I thought that it was going to be so difficult. I also, you, you told me about how it caused all the problems in your shoulders and, 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 and in your neck and in your back and in your heart and your heart. My neck. My back. All of it. I also have a little bit of a hurt in my shoulder and I thought it was going to flare it back up. I really did. I'm very happy to say that it has not, at least so far. And maybe it's just the way that I'm drafting it. Maybe there's something unique about the way that I'm doing it. I have absolutely no idea, but it hasn't given me any problems yet, which knock on wood, right? But this, I just want to talk about this for one quick second. This is a drop spindle. It's made out of Ipe wood. This is from a Quebecois woodworking duo. They... I don't have the words. The company's name is Lam Lan, which do not come for me in the comments. Don't do it. I did not take French, not once, not for one day did I ever take a French class. That was me mimicking the Google Translate voice. Lim Lin. We're not gonna get into it, but you can check them out below. Check them out because they deserve it. I have had the greatest time. This is this is my first, this is my first single. As I'm learning the languages, it is a single, which is just to indicate that it is a single thread. Uh, apparently, when you ply two of them together, it becomes a double. Do three, it becomes a triple. At least that's as far as I understand, because I don't know about you, but when I dive into something new, I become a little bit ravenous. <laughs> I suppose is the right word. I get very excited about things and I need to know as much about it as I physically can. I'm spinning wool. Okay, cool. I want to know how many different types of sheep are there? What type of wool do they produce? How do you process the wool? When you process the wool, how does it get? What do you do with it next? Is it combed? Is it carded? What is combing? What is carding? I just need to know all of those things and I want to know all of the language. Not because I don't want to seem like a fool, I suppose. Not I'm trying to keep myself from looking like I'm ignorant, which I am. I'm, in, I'm you know, new to all of this, but I just, I don't know. This is something that people dedicate a lot of time to, and I want to give them the respect that they deserve by making sure that I'm using the right language, that I'm doing my part as a, a participant in their craft, ultimately, right? Like at the end of the day, I'm the recipient of their craft, and the least that I can do is respect it enough to learn the language. So I got this field guide to fleece. Hopefully that's straight and in focus. I'm really excited about this. It's super compact and small, right? I could just put it in a bag. I'm planning on taking this with me to some fiber festivals that I'm going to this month and next. Yes, I'm going to my first fiber festivals. I cannot wait to see what you all geek out about so hard. So excited. Are there going to be sheep there? There had better be sheep there. If there aren't sheep there, I'm going to be very, very upset. But there's one in Michigan next weekend. Actually, by the time this is on YouTube at the moment, as you're watching this, I will be in Michigan actually to, to see that. So there's the one in Michigan. So I'm planning on going to the one in Michigan. And then also there is one in Wisconsin that I'm planning on going to as well. And I can't wait to take this with me and sort of just use it as, as my sort of like handy dandy cheat book for that. So I got that one. And then I also got... Respect the spindle, which this just seemed like an absolute no-brainer. It really did just feel like I, I had to get it. And so this this is going to be, I've heard that it's a bit of a Bible. And so I'm, I'm very excited to, to read that one. 
And so those, I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, that's that, those are the whips that I have now. I suppose I get to call this a whip. I suppose that this is in fact a work in progress because, you know, I'm working my way through the last bit of this fiber. So that's what I'm working on. I'm going to pack these up. I'm going to pack these up and then I have one more idea and I'm interested to see if you'd like to join me. Okay. So here's what I'd like to do. I don't know if you're like me. But I am finding it harder and harder to find some time to just sit down and dedicate to a little bit of crafting. It just seems like every single day there's more and more that's being asked of me and it's difficult to just find a few minutes to just sit down and enjoy it. So I have my A1 sweater in front of me here. I've got my cuffs. I'm about to move on into the ribbing. And what I'd love is I'd love for you to get your current whip. No matter what you're working on, it could be crocheting. Maybe you're an embroiderer. Perhaps you're doing some cross-stitching. Maybe you're spinning. I don't know. That's very exciting. If you are, comment below and tell me what you're spinning because I'm very excited to know about it. But whatever it is, I'd love if we could just share this space and share this time together and just work on our stuff. Take these next few minutes to ourselves to just relax and enjoy one another. I'm going to play some music. I'm going to work on mine. I hope that you're going to work on yours, but you know what? You don't have to because I'm not in the business of forcing anybody to do anything that they don't want to. So if you would like to, I'd love for you to join me. I absolutely would. So go ahead and pause this if you want. I'm going to get my stuff set up here and you can just join me back here when you are ready. All right. Oh, I have to make sure that I've got the right needles here. Yes, it switches. It switches from the cast on into a different rib, different needle for the rib. This is going to be published on a Friday. I hope that you had an absolutely fantastic week. Yeah. And that you have an amazing weekend ahead of you. Something fun. Something fun and carefree. Something you don't have to worry about. Enough time for worrying during the week. You don't need to take that with us into the weekend. I figured it out. One too many knit stitches. That's all it takes to ruin a two by two rib.
You know, I had thought I got this all untangled. And that was very close. I'm always so interested. What was it that got you involved in the craft that you're in right now? Whatever you're working on at the moment, whether it is embroidery, cross-stitching, maybe you're particularly adventurous and you are throwing pottery at the moment, which I would love. I love the idea of someone just sitting at a pottery wheel right now. But what got you started? I'm always so interested in that. Some people, it seems that they learned in school, that some people learned how to knit in school or they learned how to crochet as a part of a course when they were very young. Some people learn from grandparents. Some people just seem to pick it up in their adulthood. I'm always so fascinated by it. Well, I have successfully kept these from getting tangled a second time. Let's see if I can go back the other way and keep it from happening again. Fingers crossed. This is such a unique experience for me. I don't usually knit with other people or, or work with other people. I don't have a crafting circle of my own. I don't have like a little little knit club or anything of that nature. And so this is this is unique for me. I feel sort of exposed. I feel like all of a sudden people are seeing behind the curtain and watching me with my bad technique. Earlier you saw me tink out like 50 some odd stitches because I made a mistake. And you know what? Proud of myself for not editing that out. I say that now as though the editing doesn't happen later, but I'm telling future me, Christopher, you're not allowed to edit that out. It's also very unique to just be sitting upright, knitting. Usually I sit in, on the couch. I am a 
and the couch sitter. It comes time for knitting. And I have this little lamp. Wow, that accent. I have this little lamp. <laughs> I have this little lamp that sits over my shoulder. And I don't have very good eyesight, if you couldn't tell by how insanely thick these glasses are. But I don't have very good eyesight, and so... All of this is brand new for me. We might have to do a little bit different next time. But for now, I'm just glad that we get to sit here together and enjoy one another's company. You're sort of like my international crafting circle. I have no idea what I messed up on on the last one, but for about eight stitches, my ribs were all messed up. <laughs> You're just seeing me make all sorts of mistakes. All sorts. But I'm also fixing them. And that's what matters, right? I have to be honest, these cuffs are actually the result of a huge mistake. They use a tubular cast on, which is not something that I'd ever done before, but I was really looking forward to learning. 
And so I did the tubular cast on, everything worked out fine. I was doing great. I got all the way through my ribs, did everything that I was supposed to. And then I realized that I missed three words at the top of the instructions. The instructions for the cast on started with, with waist yarn. And the funny thing is, is that after you cast on with the waste yarn, which is what this little pink is that you can see here, this little pink and white, after the, the waste yarn, it says, the instructions say, using main yarn. And I was like, well, I'm already using the main yarn. What on earth are you even talking about? Ignorance. Could have saved myself a whole lot of trouble. Do you set goals for yourself with your crafting? Do you say, oh, this month I want to get XX done, or I want to achieve this, or do you work toward learning things? Like, I'm working toward making my first sweater or making my first shawl. Are you working on designing something? That would be neat. I always find it so interesting when people set themselves really strong goals. It seems like you've got kind of two camps of crafters. People who are really goal-centric. There are people who sort of fly by the seat of their pants. They're sort of just taken by the wind to wherever they're going. And I think those people are so incredible. Anyone who's ever visited my Ravelry account, I think, knows that I am more than a little bit over-organized. So, having a little bit more freedom and a little bit more fun is something that I'm trying to do. Something I'm trying to bring into my own crafting journey is being a little bit more willy-nilly. I think this is going to be my last row. I don't want to eat up too much of your day. So I'm going to finish off this row on this cuff and I got one more.
right, this is the last row for me. You do not have to stop. You can just keep on going. I hope you get to spend all afternoon or all evening. Maybe, maybe you're even watching this in the morning. But whenever you're watching it, I hope you get to spend so much time crafting. It feeds the soul, doesn't it? Reminds us that we are a part of something that is bigger than what we are currently experiencing. Something that came before us. Something that will be here long after we are gone. I'd like to think that someday, way in the future, there's somebody thinking the exact same thing. Wondering about the types of people like us who are sitting around sharing stories. Experiencing the collective joy of making something out of nothing. Purely for the pleasure of bringing beauty into the world. All right. Well, I got a little bit of my ribbing done. Just a little bit. I'll just take a look at that. <laughs> nothing, nothing too fancy. Just a little, just a little two by two ribbing. But I'm so glad that we got to spend that time together. Thank you so much. I'm going to put my pattern away here. Like I said, you can keep on, keep on crafting away. Just keep on spending the rest of your day or, you know, ease on into your night. I hope that it's beautiful. I want to encourage you to tell me what you'd like to see more of in this, in this particular space. This, this is a space that is made for friends. This is a place where you belong, where crafting is for everybody and for every body. It's for the yarn goblins and the fiber trolls around the world that I have come to find and those that I haven't found yet. So this space is as much yours as it is mine and I want to know more about what you'd like to see. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I really, I really appreciate it. My name is Christopher. I'm Flannel and Pearls, your local neighborhood knitting friend, and I'll see you next time.